Hello, I'm Chris Patrick from PAS and I'm going to um, take you through some of the slides we presented at the um, Local Authority Nature Recovery Toolkit Roadshow event we delivered in March. And what I'm going to do now is go straight into the slides and, and put these up for you. Essentially, we've got um, a short presentation here that takes you through why the talk in the room, what are the conditions for success? So this is the toolkit in a nutshell, and what we've got is um, a process really um, for um, how local authorities can engage um, with colleagues across other services um, and get people in the room and get them interested uh, to understand how nature can help them address their priorities. Um, but also the challenges, the key environmental challenges, whether that's flooding, heat stress. Um, and we're doing this through you know, a process of you know, kind of initial engagement. And then once you've kind of engaged and you've got people in the room running a series of workshops, so we've got um, you know, kind of uh, a process here of delivering three workshops. Um, and those workshops are focusing on priorities and opportunities, barriers and solutions, funding and delivery. And as part of the toolkit, we've produced a template agenda. Um, again, the toolkit is very, very flexible, so you don't necessarily have to deliver three three hour workshops. You could deliver, you know, kind of one consolidated, you know, um, workshop. But what we've tried to do is say, well, actually, here's three workshops that you could cover these subjects. Um, and, you know, we've provided the resources, including um, slide decks, briefing notes that you can send out before running those workshops to get people to kind of um, warm up to some of the key issues that will be um, covered in those workshops. But also we've got an action template there that I'll come on to in a minute. Some useful data layers and key headlines, um, as well as kind of priority steps and, and a checklist of quick wins. But um, ultimately what we're trying to kind of do through this process is understand, you know, how nature can you know, help address some of the priorities and some of the opportunities with nature, some of the barriers and solutions as to why they're not being taken up, um, but also, you know, kind of fundamentally the, the funding and delivery around that, but ultimately ending up with an action list of, of quick wins that people can take forward um, and kind of review and come back and, and look at, you know, actually what's working, what's not working well and how can you improve on that. So it's about kind of ending up with some quick wins to take forward um, and, and start delivering. So um, what we've got is um, we've been evolving the toolkit since September 2023, where we had an initial idea of actually how do we help local authorities in great engage across their, their services. Um, we held some workshops um, in Manchester in London in November 2023 just to test that idea and what needed to go into the toolkit. And as a result of that, you know, we had some really great feedback, which we then kind of used to start producing version two of the toolkit. We held further briefing sessions with local authorities in December 2023 and then um, start engaging with, you know, um, some authorities and um, and then kind of further evolving the toolkit um, leading up to um, the roadshow events in March, um, where we look to kind of, you know, kind of actually present um, the kind of more detailed um, contents of the toolkit and test again testing and evolving the toolkit um, and kind of using the feedback received from those events to actually you know kind of further um, improve and develop the toolkit and you know from April now onwards what we're looking to do is actually kind of further update it but also actually start you know kind of getting out there and testing with the authorities and co-produce you know kind of the further development of the toolkit so what we've got are a number of products. So we, as I explained, we've got the workshop planning template. So there are templates for three workshops, challenges and opportunities, barriers and solutions, funding and delivery. We've got some supporting resources there. So slide decks, briefing notes, um, recordings um, of how to deliver these and also appendices. So there's an action template. So actually taking you through the whole process of going through each of the the um, the workshops, but you know, providing a, a template there that you can actually kind of input the the feedback and the and the key issues that have come up as as a result of those. So you've got a paper trail of of how you've ended up from the start to the finish and ending up with some key actions at the end. And I'll come through to that template in a moment. But also, we've got some useful data layers and key headlines. 
So here's an example of the, the workshop templates. They all follow a, a simpler, um, simple, um, consistent um, structure, um, you know, kind of with an introduction, bit of scene setting, but also, you know, importantly, this is about kind of discussion and actually kind of understanding from other people around the room, um, whether that's people working highways, estates, education, etc. What does all this mean for your service um, and, and your priorities? And actually, you know, what are the key issues um, that, you know, are affecting delivery your own priorities? Um, what are the challenges? You know, how can nature and, and the government's nature recovery reforms help address these? And then, you know, kind of running on from that, you've then got a further breakout session to actually kind of really kind of do a deep dive into that and actually start kind of filling in um, the action template. And again, we've got, um, the action template, but we've got Word documents that help to, you know, kind of that can be printed off as A3s and, you know, people can break out to breakout groups and actually kind of start inputting some of this into um, into those Word documents. So again, it's it's very much a kind of um, discussion based process. We want to involve people and and again, learn from others that are already doing it. So, you know, kind of how do we kind of inspire and use examples from from other parts of the service that are already doing this that actually can inspire other services to actually kind of say, oh, actually we could um, we could do something similar to that. We could potentially get some funding for that similar to the other services. So again, um, this is about kind of that discussion and, you know, we've got the priorities, opportunities, the barriers and solutions and the funding delivery all follow a similar process. But ultimately we're trying to end up with those kind of quick wins and key actions. And how do we change business as usual? How do we tweak business as usual? So, you know, not fundamentally having some, you know, kind of major um, projects, but actually kind of how do we just start chain, making that change with some quick wins and um, which ultimately then lead on to to other things. And this is just to take through the action template. So each of the colored columns here is so orange, green and blue um, are each of the workshops. Um, and again, it's just kind of a, a kind of helpful way of actually populating well, actually, what are some of the key issues and some of the opportunities and barriers and solutions and funding delivery that are capturing from from each of those workshops? Um, and again, following that arrow to the process that ultimately we're ending up with some quick wins and an action plan that can be taken forward. So why use the toolkit? Well, some key kind of um, um, points here really is, you know, kind of working across the council, achieving political buy-in and joining up environmental work across other services. How do we get um, colleagues from other services into the room and have that conversation and, and again that kind of then links into the read across into other plans and strategies and streamlining those benefits you know actually how can we have a conversation across a number of different services um, but also so that other people understand and have a clear understanding of how to deliver those changes you know those changes to business as usual that they can make some quite you know simple quick quick wins, some quick changes that actually can help perhaps deliver some savings, but also secure additional funding and benefits to those services. Um, I think it's also, you know, kind of a key, a really kind of significant um, tool to actually help um, deliver the biodiversity reporting duties, but also um, helping, you know, kind of local authorities um, with, you know, kind of better local nature recovery strategy production readiness. So, you know, having a clearer picture of the issues, the opportunities and how to tackle them internally with the council that can help feed into local nature recovery strategies that are being produced at the moment. And ultimately, as, as, as I mentioned on a number of occasions, arriving at a short list of priorities and activities and interventions that can start to be delivered. So what it, it does do and what it doesn't do, well, it's a self-serve process. It's um, for use by local authorities. It's a flexible process, adaptable to meet local needs. So we've provided some templates there, some slide decks, but ultimately it's up to yourselves how you want to take them on board. So you might want to take different parts, different bits of, of the templates, um, the agendas, the briefing notes, the slide decks, and use them to create, curate your own, um, you know, kind of, um, engagement process um, and ultimately about, you know, kind of helping to support delivery of corporate priorities, plans and projects. So it's not a certified training module. You don't have to deliver things in a certain way. It doesn't replace all the different kind of statutory duties that are out there, whether or not that's kind of 
biodiversity reporting duties, biodiversity net gain or local nature recovery strategies. It's it's a process to help inform those. And again, the audience doesn't necessarily have to be restricted to internal stakeholders. If you want to involve external stakeholders, um, then, you know, that will actually help you know, do that, whether that's Natural England, other NGOs, etc., to bring them in the room and help with that process. That's great. So, you know, as we went through the initial workshop sessions in in November, you know, we had really good customer ac acceptance from those local authorities. Um, you know, they all felt that the process and materials will help. Um, so we have, you know, we had an outline of the products that we've um, that we've built upon, but ultimately they do need to be localised. They do need to kind of, you know, we've got a standardised set of of, of um, presentation slides, but they do need to be localised to um, reflect your own circumstances, what's going on, what, what your policies and plans, what your priorities, what your challenges. So, you know, and again, one of the key things that we've heard is the need to fold in more examples and supporting information um, as it develops. So how can we learn from other authorities that, you know, that's talking heads or other case studies that others can learn from and be inspired by? So who can use it and how? Well, as I said, it's been designed for local authorities um, that want to deliver the toolkit, which can be adapted and localised to meet their needs. Um, some authorities felt that actually, you know, it might be best to engage with service leads on a one to one basis initially um, to actually kind of just, you know, kind of start to warm them up to um, to the toolkit and how it can be used. Um, whereas others felt that they just wanted to go straight into and bring together a group of service leads, service leads through a more structured process. So again, very, very adaptable, flexible to meet your needs, whether or not that's on a one to one basis with colleagues or kind of setting up a workshop to bring people together in the room. And either way, you know, the right permissions and capacity needs to be in place to help coordinate, engage and drive the process forward, not only from your side in terms of delivering the process, but also, you know, kind of other service users and actually, you know, for them to have the time and capacity to be able to feed into this. So again, you know, a lot of that is about how do you kind of um, get the permissions and, and capacity um, you know, kind of higher up, um, whether or not that's kind of, you know, senior officer or even, you know, kind of member level. And again, that feeds into, you know, corporate priorities. How do you link this process to corporate priorities and help deliver corporate priorities? So it does need, you know, champions. It needs teeth in terms of, you know, being politically framed, um, but also it needs resources. Um, revenue and lack of is a driver for this. You know, people are very busy. So how do you ensure that you do kind of get the buy in to get people in the room um, to be able to spend some time on this? Um, and, you know, what we have heard is that, you know, quite often, you know, nature is declined from uh, a divorce from um, climate change. So how do you build on existing activities um, that are supporting um, delivery of climate change objectives and vice versa. And again, you know, not only is it divorced from climate change, but, you know, obviously, you know, sometimes, you know, it's not enough to tie this into other priorities, whether that's environment, care, health, economy and housing. So, you know, how you pitch this is really key and how do you understand other people's priorities and how do you understand and kind of get them interested in terms of how nature can help delivery of their own priorities. So we ended up the, um, you know, the kind of, um, delivery of this presentation with a discussion about, you know, does this all make sense? Is there a need for the toolkit? Are you clear on what's being produced? Why is it being produced and who can use it and, and, and how it can be used? So we had some really good, great discussions and feedback on that as well. So um, please, you know, kind of watch the other um, recordings of this, you know, from Natural England and local authorities that um, actually kind of understand, you know, kind of how they're delivering nature recovery and, and why this um, toolkit is important to them. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording now and um, thanks very much for listening.